um, like I said, the reason that I created this channel is so I could actually just speak about the things that I've experienced. Um, I'm going to just go through this video without putting a whole lot of emphasis on everything, but one of the very first experiences I had was of seeing a... Uh, a UFO when I was a kid. I was like nine years old. I remember going outside, taking out the garbage. And uh, I was, just before we go there, I was already a kid that was having dreams every night that were just keeping me up. And uh, I couldn't sleep at all when I was a kid. I would see things, literally see things in my room. It was the scariest thing in the world. Like whatever I wanted, I guess was in my mind, I would just see it in front of me. It doesn't make me crazy or anything. What I found out was... Um, during uh, my family had a very uh, rough uh, dysfunctional family, I guess I, I just say dysfunctional family. But when me and my sister were very young, we were in third grade, I think, and uh, I was in third, she was in fourth. And because of what was happening in the family, I guess Child Protective Services or something like that came to come pick us up and they took us to get tested somewhere and they were testing I guess our uh, intelligence levels and things like that you know I know only now I didn't know back then what it was I thought oh cool they're asking us questions we have we have to do like a test I was like this is great I did it finished it they gave me another test I did that finished it gave me another test did that finish it so they brought me and my sister together and I remember the gentleman and the woman that was there both speaking saying uh, they asked well how did she do I said oh her intelligence is average and my sister's probably gonna be really pissed off that I said that uh, <laughs> but when they said, uh, how, how did he do? They said, we don't have a test high enough for him. His intelligence is off the charts. That's, that's the words I heard as a kid. Um, I'm sure that there are many people like me in the world. I'm not anybody that's unique in, in any way, except in my own individuality, of per my, my own perspectives. That's the only way I'm unique. I think that everybody has the same potential in this world. And I think that uh, we're all at different stages, guys. That's all it is. But getting back to the story, was that when I had seen that UF that whatever that light was in the sky I remember it moving up to the side down and back over again making a full square and then pow shooting up into the sky at such a high speed and you know even as a young child at the age of nine eight nine years old whatever I was at that time I remember thinking to myself there is nothing that I know of that can make those movements no planes even at that age I kind of understood the idea of physics somewhat um, the basic physics you know the Thing, things that a child would know and I was like I don't remember seeing anything that we have that's capable of doing those maneuvers and of course as a child I didn't use those words I probably used a lot more uh, funny words <laughs> to describe it but uh, yeah I was doing this amazing feat of, of uh, movement and uh it was fascinating, you know. I remember as a child seeing that, but then I had other other things that happened. And I'm gonna, just, like I said, I'm just gonna briefly go through this. Um, there, right after, shortly after seeing that, I remember I had hanging. This is Brooklyn, New York, again, 1978, 79, somewhere. And I remember I was hanging out with a buddy of mine, and we were, we were these two young kids. And he goes, "Hey, let's jump on the back of the ice cream truck." And uh, I was like, "Okay." <laughs> So we both, like, two, you know, unintelligent kids, like Beavis and Butthead, jumped on the back of the truck, the ice cream truck, and I don't know if the guy knew that we were back there, but he sped up. My friend jumped off, and I hung on because I was scared, and he goes, hey, jump, man, jump. So I was like, okay, I jumped. The next thing I know, I remember just hitting my head really hard in the back of my head. Next thing I know, I was uh, being woken up by people, and they're like, oh, man, we thought you were dead, and they're saying all this stuff, and I didn't think anything of it. I got up, I went home, right? And uh, I think I know what happened here, but when I went home, my parents went out that night. Yes, they left me and my sister home alone that night. Uh, when we were home alone, I started getting these really bad headaches. Then I started bleeding through my nose, and I remember going over the sink in the bathroom and yelling to my sister saying there's blood coming out of my nose and she was terrified because there's so much blood just pouring out of my nose. And uh, that same night, I... Uh, when they came and they saw that I had this, this, uh, they saw the blood in the sink. They said, What happened? And then they told her, you know, my sister told my mother and my father, and they, were both, they panicked. They were like, What's going on? But I never told them that I, what happened to me on the truck. I, I thought they would kill me if they found out that I had done something so stupid. And, uh, <laughs> 
I remember, uh, you know, I was feeling really sick that night. I remember going to bed, laying in bed, and, uh, you know, falling asleep with pain. I remember getting up uh, maybe a couple hours later or something, and uh, my head was hurting me so bad I couldn't even think. It was just so painful. And I remember not being able to make any intelligible words. I, I was mumbling or something like that. Every time I tried to speak, it would come out like, uh, like that. I remember that. It sounded like a zombie, basically. So, uh, you know, at that age, I didn't know what was going on. And uh, I remember thinking, God, I feel like I'm dying. And I was a child. And I, my sisters had a bed in the same room towards the foot of my bed towards the windows right across from me towards this side is where uh, to my left was the door going into the hallway into my mother's and father's room and the bathroom was between so I remember thinking to myself if I could just throw myself off the bed they would hear me and uh, someone would come in and get me so I remember just crawling to the edge of the bed and just looking down and it looked so far to me but I couldn't even move my body and I said I have to throw myself off to get some attention here and I threw myself off the bed and you just heard thud like just a sack of potatoes or dead weight just hitting the ground really loud and then I went uh trying to scream I remember this like sound that I made uh, like a zombie and uh the next thing I know I hear my mother calling out. She comes in the room. She's like, you know, what's wrong? And I said, I I can't talk. And she touches me and she says, you're burning up. And uh, she was a nurse at the time or like something like that uh, in uh, dealing or she's taking nursing and stuff like that at the time. And I remember she... uh, was shocked at how hot my body was the temperature she got she got the thermometer put it in my mouth it was at a hundred and three point something or somewhere around there i never forgot the numbers and uh she said that if this doesn't go down they're gonna have to take me to the hospital because also i'm not able to walk or talk or anything she put the, i have to give her credit for this she put me in the bathtub and turned the cold water on just let it run on me for a while and eventually she brought me back to my bed and she laid down next to me in my bed and slept with me in her arms i never forgot that and this is where it gets strange guys i remember when i finally did fall asleep uh at the remember i told you at the foot of the bed the other half of the room was where my both my sister slept in one bed that entire side of the room i was in that side of the room but it was a cave when i woke up and i could see on the other side of the room my half of the room where my mother was sitting up with her eyes open like she saw like she's just like you know looks like a zombie her eyes open really big and i remember just looking at her and i looking around seeing the cave that i'm in i can't it's like this invisible barrier there i can't get through it you know and some other stuff happened there as well these beings were there trying to take me with them and i said no and i started fighting back and they were like he's hostile or something like that he's violent don't don't you know just let him go and uh but they were still fighting some of them were still fighting to take me and i remember uh my grandmother who told me anytime you feel like you're in trouble or something's going on just pray to god and uh i said okay well who do i pray to and this is really interesting i said who do i pray to do I pray to Jesus? And then I thought, remember seeing in the Bible, I studied the Bible when I was a kid with my grandmother. I said, wait a second, Jesus always talks about praying to his father, who's God. So I said, that's who I'll pray to. So I started praying to God, Jesus' father. And uh, this light or a being of light showed up and I looked at it and I was scared and it put its hand out towards me and I went to put my hands out and I hesitated and then I looked at it and I was like looking at the light being and I'm like thinking what is this this is weird but something showed up after I prayed is this God and it looked at me and kind of smirked in this weird way which is really strange it looked highly intelligent is, is what I'm saying and it almost took what I said as a joke like in other words that it was probably a very human thing that I did to whatever that was was assuming that it was God and uh it uh when it reached out its hand towards me i grabbed its hand just putting all my trust into i just did call on god so i'm hoping and praying that this is something of that nature and it walked me right through the invisible barrier i remember that 
and uh, when I was holding on to its hand and when I looked at my mother my mother goes what are you doing and I said you won't believe what just happened I was stuck in this place and this person or this thing got me out I turned around to look and it was gone it was gone I never forgot that but uh you know that left an imprint in my mind the first imprint the first thing that it made me do was question what was that invisible barrier how did the room change like that you remember this is 1978 so we didn't know about like technology like we do today like simulated reality and and even a potential holodeck and holographic technology and how they can with a neuro uh, uh a neural interface how they can manipulate the mind you know and all these things that we're that we're learning now but i want you to keep in mind guys that even the technology that we have now is probably so primitive compared to what they have out there and how, how, why do i say that because if there are in fact other worlds floating around revolving around other suns that have been here billions of light years before us that's a lot of time to develop so we are probably in our infancy not even we're probably still before infancy you know in the process of becoming that and uh there's just so much guys there's so much i want to tell you guys that i want to share with you about this because i feel that the reason this comes right back to why i also name rename my channel to when life has no meaning and dreams define you why because my dreams have been defining my life they've been predicting things in my life since i was a kid and uh i even have medical documentation if if it's still there and i have to find out of some of the tests they ran on me and how abnormal they showed up guys look i'm not the only one in the world like this i'm sure there are other people out there like me and i want you to think that all of us are special in some way but there these things do exist our dreams mean something and uh as i go on with this channel and and you know share all the stuff with you guys i hope that you guys really enjoy what i do if you do please hit that like button please hit that subscribe and the uh what is it the notification bell as well i think those are the things that really help the channel grow i won't be doing any more content on the police brutality or anything violent anymore i realized that you know if like i said if you know my background i had my arm my leg and my neck broken all on account of these people from uh what happened from 20 years ago after 9 11 when the cops did what they did to me but i'm working through that but i leave it i believe everything happens for a reason there's nothing that uh in life everything is spiritual even though we think it's all physical physical seems to be the simulated reality as they say the matrix spiritual seems to be the real essence of what we are and who we are but guys i will leave you with that and remember when you know when life has no meaning and dreams define you this is my channel this is what i'm about i'm tsp rob shiva tsp the spiritual philanthropist i'll see you guys in the next video thanks for listening and if you have anything that you want to share please put it on there. if you want to be interviewed on here we could we could even do that and have a discussion or send me something um i'll put up in the description uh an email where you guys can send me uh anything that you want and uh we can communicate that way also you can communi communicate with me on any one of my social media platforms whether it be instagram or if you go on facebook is my biggest one i have like eighty-eight thousand people follow me on uh in, on uh, facebook and uh not bragging guys that's that's nothing really in, in compared to what's going on out in the world um but if you see eighty-eight thousand and you see tsp rav shiva that's me uh that's how you'll know because there's a lot of other people use there's people out there that use other people's names on other people's likeness and it's i've had to deal with this on a consistent basis guys so that's why i'm pointing this out to you so you know the difference okay i have that many followers on there that's who i am you'll see when life has no meaning and dreams define you you'll see those eyes right there on the screen okay and those are my eyes guys so uh please check out all my stuff and share your thoughts with me have a great and wonderful day and i'll see you in the next video guys all right